Hi YouTube, it's Lindy and Bart in our biology apartment. We're back from our little hiatus and I thought this evening we would talk about what you need to legally teach English in China and what you should expect of your employer for being a legal employee. So first and foremost, in order to work in China teaching English, you need a Z visa. I know there are people that kind of do it under the table. They'll come on a tourist visa or they'll come on a student visa and they'll teach English that way. And I would not advise that if the government were to check on your place of work and find a person there, that's going to be bad. You could get deported, you could get fined, you could get blacklisted, so please don't do that. So in order to get said Z visa, your passport needs to be from one of six countries being either the US, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, the United Kingdom, and some provinces South Africa is okay, some provinces South Africa isn't, so do your research. I'm sorry if you're from South Africa and you had your heart set on a place and it's just not legal. But I'm sure there's other places where you can teach and it'll be fine. You also need to have attended 12 years of primary, middle, and high school in an English-speaking country, like one of those six listed, and you need a university degree. University can, degree can be in whatever you want. My university degree was in history and I had nothing related to education at all and it was totally fine. I did some study abroads in other countries and that was fine, just the degree needs to be from a university in one of those six countries. You can go to somewhere while you're in college and that's fine, but yeah, the name on there needs to be from one of the six countries. Also you need a TEFL or TESOL certificate. Mine was super easy. I did it online. It was $70 with a coupon and they want 120 hours mine was 150 i just thought that looked a little better so you do that online you print out your little certificate and wonderful great you're set to go now there is a really really high demand for english teachers in china and you will have lots of schools that you can choose from and my advice for a school is ask questions and if they're asking you to do something that makes you feel uncomfortable, don't work there. If they're asking you to teach extra classes like under the radar, don't do that. There's tons of other places you can teach that are reasonable. And if you're in the deciding process and you're asking questions and they're making you feel like, oh, like, why are you being so annoying? Why are you asking all these questions? Ugh, like, Dah. If they're not working with you, don't put up with that. There's tons of other places where you can work. And with the contract, my housing is provided. I get to live in this lovely two-bedroom apartment for free. Some companies will like set you up with an apartment. Other places will give you a housing subsidy. The place that I'm going to work at come the start of March, they give you 4,000 renminbi a month in housing, and that's going to be in Beijing. And I've done my research, I found that that's reasonable if you're not living in like the smack dab center ring. If you're outside, that's fine. My work also provides me with a flight reimbursement every contract I get finished. So every year I get 7,000 renminbi for a flight to wherever I want. And that's pretty cool. That being said, there are varying lengths of contracts. I've seen ones for six months. I've seen 18-month ones. I think the most common one is a year, and most year ones will provide you with flight reimbursement. If it's a six-month one, some may, some may not. You're going to want to ask about that. They may do a partial flight reimbursement, but I guess if you're unsure, maybe a six-month contract is the way to go. It should also say if, say, you're working here and you're just not happy and you want to leave, what are the grounds that you can terminate the contract? Mine says you can terminate it and that's fine. They just expect two months notice and if you do that, you have to pay them back for the free housing. So I could see if you were maybe here for a month or two and it just wasn't working and you wanted to leave, okay, cool. If you'd been here for maybe six or seven months, I can see that getting pretty pricey. And unless it was something egregious, you'd probably just want to tough it out. Also, your contract should spell out your working hours. To teach 
English. I know the law in this province is you can only have 20 contact hours with the kids a week. Some places make you do office hours where you sit in the office where in theory you're supposed to lesson plan, correct papers, but there's a lot of time spent screwing around on the internet. My place doesn't have that. Some places do, and the contract should spell out how many contact hours do they want you to have, how many office hours, if any, do they want you to have, and it should also say, is there overtime? My overtime clause is if I go over 20 hours a week, they have to pay me overtime, which is good. That protects you. That protects them. It should also say, are you required to attend any parties? Are you required to stand outside and pass flyers? Are you required to be in videos? Are you required to do anything? And if it doesn't say that, oh, you need to do this, then I wouldn't recommend doing it because some places will just say like, oh, white person, white person, and use you as free advertising. They think, oh, if you're white, you automatically speak English. I've seen people here hired just because of the color of their skin and they could not speak English. I had no clue what they were saying, but it looks good. They want parents to come. So they might use you for free advertising, and unless the contract says, oh, that's part of the job, I would not do that. Also, it should talk about holidays and time off. There are some government-mandated holidays where they actually have to pay you, so that's pretty cool. There are also schools. Um, my school isn't really like this because it's an after-school thing, but if you work at a public school, it should say what happens during the summer and the winter holidays. Are you able to do other jobs during those times? Are they paid? Is it half paid? Is it not paid? And it should also talk about sick days. My contract says two paid sick days in every six months provided you have a doctor's note. Yeah, China's kind of weird about that. In America, you could just say, oh, like I really don't feel good. I have a headache. I just need to rest. Here in China, no, you can't do that. You need a note from the doctor saying, oh, they need to rest. And if you have the note saying, oh, they need to rest, okay, cool. You don't have that, it's not going to work. It should also say what happens if you get sick. My contract says that they have to send somebody who's a native Chinese speaker to the hospital with you to help you. I had that happen once. I had a really, really stick neck from, I'm not sure, what? Like, just one day I woke up and I couldn't move it, and I'm like, oh my god, I have meningitis, I'm gonna die. We need to go to the hospital. And they sent somebody with me to tell me what was going on, to tell me what the doctor said, to tell me the directions on the medication, and they should spell that out for you in the contract. In the contract, it should also spell out to you what should happen if people want to talk to you. My contract says if a parent wants to talk to you about their kids, you shouldn't refuse, but you do have the right to have a native Chinese speaker with to translate. I've only had to do that once, and that was a parent who thought their child was the world's most perfect angel, and I shouldn't be sending them out in the hall for being naughty. And I had the Chinese teacher explain to me why this parent was upset. I had them explain back, no, your kid might be good at your house, but here they're just this wild, crazy kid. And that was pretty okay. It should also say, if we're talking about time off, are you allowed to do other jobs? Some visas and contracts will say, yes, that's fine. Some will say, no, you can't do that. Mine is actually permission-based. I have to ask before I do anything else. And you might want to think about that if there's going to be periods in the summer where you're off, but you're not getting paid and you need money to survive. Can you get another job? Is that not allowed? Do you have to ask? That should be spelled out completely. Also, this is a mistake I made, and I learned that my current place has the shirt that you have to wear when you teach. I hate the shirt. It is this really ugly kind of reddish brown, and it smells, and I just don't like it. Nowhere in the contract does it say I have to wear it, but I was told when I got here, you need to wear it. And at my current job, I asked, is there a uniform that I have to wear? And they said, no. And I'm like, so what's appropriate to wear? And they said, oh, just use good judgment. So, okay, cool. I would not recommend signing something unless it says, like, oh, you have to do that or you don't have to do that. If you're somebody who doesn't care, I guess go for it. But I do not like the smelly shirt. Oh, 
what else? Oh, like I said, there's tons of places to work in China. The demand for foreign teachers is ridiculous. If a school is kind of giving you a bad feeling, if they're not answering your questions, if you feel like they're not being honest, find another school. There's no need for you to put up with that. There's tons of other places for you to work. And if you keep looking, I'm sure you'll find something. There's tons of places to work. There's big cities, there's small cities, private schools, public schools. Just keep looking and find a place that works for you. All right, thanks for watching and I hope you have a good day or night. See you later, bye.